This is Conversations with the Citizen. I am your host, Tia Carol Jones. I'm here today with William Penn, co-founder of Nature Boy Agency. Welcome to the show. Welcome. I mean, thank you for having me. Thank really you for being it. here. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, let's see. So my name is William Penn. And unfortunately, it's one of those names that everybody can always remember, so I can never get away with anything because you always remember my name. <laughs> I am from Chicago, um, raised in Chatham. Oh, okay. And so did the Catholic school thing, St. Dorothy's, Hales Franciscan, Lewis University, and um, finished up at Illinois State. Okay, okay. Oh. Mr. Penn. You are the co-founder of Penn Square Associates. How did you come together with Clarence Williams? And what made you want to start your own agency? Okay, that's a loaded but very good question. Okay. So, uh, my minor is in marketing. And when I graduated from college and worked in the retail field, I got a little tired of retail. And so I had the opportunity to promote a particular product and I had to start my own business to be able to do that. And I've always felt like I was an entrepreneur, so that part wasn't a big deal. And so that agency was named Penn Square and Associates. And from there, after about 20 years, I was called to work on a project for an agency called Carol H. Williams Advertising Agency. Actually, they uh, won in the Army account, and I was on the Army account previously for Lear Burnett. And they asked if I would come over and look at doing some event type work for the Army, I continue to do what I was doing for the previous agency. Okay. And so I left my agency, well, I left Penn Square, which I'm a sole pr- proprietor, so, um, and brought my team, and we went and worked on the project there. Oh. And Mr. Williams, or Clarence, my buddy, he was already there, and he worked for uh, the agency on the accounting side, and he has a, a engineering background. And so when all was said and done, we were like, man, we should venture back off on our own and doing some stuff. It's a great combination of um, my marketing and 30 plus years of experience, and his experience as an engineer would talk to people or talk to um uh, potential agencies and potential clients, we would have that both areas covered. Okay. Okay. I guess I start stop moving. So. Mm-hmm. You're good. Okay, sorry. Mm-hmm. Why is your target market baby boomers? My target market is baby boomers because eventually I'm gonna well no, I'm already one, so I'm not gonna tell that lie here <laughs> on Thursday. It's an area that has not been um, spoken to. We we don't speak to baby boomers and as you would know you guys are not in that age range yet but when you do become there we're the second still the second largest when it comes to expenditures obviously the youth uh, generation x and so and y they spend money but they don't spend it more frequently and we spend more consistently okay and so nobody was really speaking to that group nobody was um speaking to that group in how we are now living here in the 21st century. Uh, when I mean by the 21st century, obviously we're, you know, uh, I'm 60, so a lot of people still confuse me for a 59 year old. So I, I still, um, I guess, young looking and still vibrant and still do a lot of things that, you know, Starbucks every morning, the, the dog food, the, there's just certain things that Clorox bleach and all that type of stuff okay. that we have worked with that we have all have continued to use and I've been using this stuff now for 40 years and been um, drinking Starbucks for 30 years okay. so we we still spend money right right Nature Boy offers lifestyle marketing urban influencer engagement promotion brand marketing public public relations and mobile tours. How do you intend to continue to provide these services in the midst of COVID? Well, in in the uh, in this new day and age, now that we're coming out of the pandemic, uh, Zoom has become so a lot of our conferences are virtual okay. and in person. So it's didn't we used to have the conference of 200, 300 people 
there might now only be a hundred, you know, the first hundred people can actually be there in person. The other 200 or so are now coming, beaming in via Zoom or via some type of online um, service. Uh, we do it a lot more with Facebook Live and using some of the tools that you guys are using here to reach the audience and, and, and have that, that um, personal experience with people. Can you explain what an urban influencer Engage, what what urban influencer engagement is and what the goal is? Oh, sure. So, um, influencers, as we know, are people who always get have gotten paid to promote something. Right. Back in our days, um, it would be uh, Muhammad Ali promoting the uh, a car brand. So they would consider him an urban influencer, and because he drive a Cadillac or whatever the particular car at the time. We, he's people, the advertising agencies, and of course the client is hoping that that when people see that they would jump on it and buy a Cadillac because uh, Muhammad Ali uh, drove one. Today, urban influencers are anybody, everybody in this room today, all f four of us can be urban influencers, okay. and it's uh, really is about who's following you on your social media, who's following the citizen, for instance, online. You guys are broadcasting this live, people are watching it. If I actually had a, this is a seamless plug for Apple, but Apple phone and show people that um, from a lifestyle, how I do what I do in reference to keeping healthy, keeping um, my blood pressure in check and so on and so forth by utilizing this, your, your people will be like, oh my God, I, I want to be able to do that. I want to prick my finger every day to, to check for my, my, um, my sugar level. Okay. But by now taking this and putting my finger on the camera, I can tell that my sugar is, is and this is an example, even though it, it has been done, mm -hmm. but it's not out publicly yet. Okay. But, um, so that's what influencers would do. I would take on these, the persona of different products and, and, you know, every morning when I drink my Starbucks, I read The Citizen. And so by me reading The Citizen and seeing what's going on, People are like, oh, okay, well, why is he doing that? Oh, that's William. Yeah, we've been knowing William for the last 20, 25 years because he's been on all the news channels and everywhere in the city of Chicago and abroad and, and talking about different products and different things and different enga social engagement. Let's follow him. And now that they're following me, they know, oh, okay, well, maybe I should read The Citizen because he's reading it. He's getting all this knowledge from it. And instead of me waiting for him to tell me the knowledge, I want to get the knowledge myself first. Okay. Okay. Great. What is it like to start a business during COVID-19? It, it was very hard, but it was interesting. By having COVID-19, I think, and I was just driving in a few of the communities coming over here, and sorry for my tardiness, but there was some, a lot of traffic and so on and so forth. I think COVID has given uh, kind of leveled the playing field okay. for a lot of entrepreneurs to be able to jump into the game now with very little money or very little, um, you know, upkeep because everything is done virtually and everything is was it's online and so just being just having a um, I see you guys are using iPad Pros you know just using iPad Pro um, starting a website you can start a business now getting the following and that when you go back to your urban influencers and so on and so forth, having people um, watching me on, on here on Facebook Live and when I'm on KNTV, they watch me there for, um, for um, different things. So now I begin to have a small following. And then with that following, I'm able to really get some thoughts and get some um, um, help and exposure out to some, for some of my clients and some of the things that I believe in. Okay. And speaking of clients, who are some of the people that you've been working with? Uh, in recent times, we've been working with uh, Chicago Area Project. Uh, we've been working with Northwestern. We're working with um, Lori's Children's Hospital on an upcoming uh, little piece. And then um, we went back to our, I guess, the mothership, Carol H. Williams Advertising Agency, and some of their clients and did just signing contracts where we would just be their engagement uh, group. So when they get a bigger contract and they need to have some sort of social engagement, some sort of event component around what they're doing, we would be the agency of choice to um, execute that for them. Okay. How 
how have you taken your previous ex experience and expertise and used it to make sure this company is successful? Well, we, we took a lot of the basics, no okay. matter when you were born or whatever you do, there's some basic things that you need to know. And everybody, if you didn't know anything about engineering, engineering is all about solving a problem. Everything that um, most people do, including us here at this table, solving that problem, however, you, however you, whatever it takes to solve that problem. And once that problem is solved, there's somebody like me from the marketing or from the PR part of it that knows how to uh, get the word out on this problem that's here why, why this problem needs to be solved. Mm -hmm. Here is, we think the solution for this problem, and then from there, seeing that it actually work. What are you doing to assist the next generation of marketing professionals? A very another good question. So we're, why, I mean, our doors are always open. I'm all, I, I mentor several uh, youth now in different not-for-profit agency about um, marketing, about events, about um, public relations. And so I always pull my cohorts from the PR world and from the advertising world in and have them come out and speak on these subjects. And uh, been a really good component on workforce development and working with some of the not-for-profits who are working in that area. And we've always known the, the old workforce development was either you were the the stop sign holder when they're doing the street or you pushing the broom, but it's like, no, let's get workforce development um, in social engagement or mm -hmm. in these events that are happening at McCormick Place where somebody has to build that event out. And why couldn't that be us? Okay. I personally do that now for our clients. So I take um, the youth with me and even people my age and say, well, here's a whole field that payment start, the hourly wage sometimes starts between 20 and 25, upwards of $30 an hour. Mm -hmm. And with that, you can you can live kind of nicely. And you're learning a skill, and you're doing something that, again, like I said, I'm 60, I'm still doing. Mm -hmm. And I unfortunately can outwork some of these 30s and these 40 year olds that are out there complaining after doing a 10 hour day. Yes, yeah, some of our days are long, 10 hour days plus, but we are making that, you know, time and a half plus that's uh, what, $45 an hour to hang TVs and plug in electric. <laughs> you can't really complain. It's a lot right. better than some of the other things you could do. For, for How much stuff can you do for $45 an hour at least in, out here in the streets and you know what's going on? Right, right. How has the advertising and marketing landscape in Chicago changed throughout the years? It changed for the worst at the beginning. So okay. uh, before they were African-American agencies, it was just general marketing agencies who was trying to market to African-Americans and Hispanic and um, any of the different various communities. And so it got a little better because people kind of stood up and say, no, that's not right. And so now we really need to have an African-American agency to represent what we think is right in reference to sponsoring different things. And then I think that um, when money got tight uh, about 10 years ago, it kind of reverted back where they would buy the African-American agency a record or buy the Hispanic agency a record and kind of bring them in-house because of consolidation. Mm -hmm. okay. And so now that the big agencies has gotten so big, um, it just so much overhead. I've had little to no overhead. I own everything. Yeah. Sorry about that. I own everything, all my computers and all that stuff, so I don't have to pass, pass that, call, that cost off to the client. Okay. It just goes directly to the bottom line. So now, again, with COVID and a lot of stuff that's going on, with the social influencers that you spoke earlier, anybody, you know, you just need a very little to get started. And once you do good for one client, they tell other people, and it just grows by word of mouth. So there's a new groundswell, but small agencies are beginning to blossom all over the country in different areas. What advice would you give younger marketing professionals and entrepreneurs? Um, to be thorough, to be very engaged 
And really the big thing is shut your mouth, listen to the client, listen to the people and what they're saying that they need okay. and understand that and be able to expound on that and give back exactly what they said. And it's not about you, it's about the product and it's about how they want it. And they're talking to you about how maybe how they want it done, but they look into you to either execute it, which is what they do for us. They give us a playbook. And it's our job to execute it. Um, that would be the main thing. Just really listen, understand what you're getting yourself into with a potential client or your own thing, and just be very thorough. Okay. Great, great. Before we wrap up, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Um, I, I'm just excited for this opportunity to come out and meet you, you, you guys. And, and like I said, I do actually can read the paper. And we do uh, put ads in there. Uh, one of our clients in the past was the U.S. Census, and I know we did some stuff in some live um, um, town halls that we help, I hope, pass through the paper that will help you guys. Thank you. Um, just people out there who's looking, if you're trying to be an entrepreneur, make sure you reach out to the paper here. And, and see what tools and stuff they have to offer you to help you. Um, if there is anything from a consulting for just a free conversation, you can always, you can kind of reach me through the paper. Um, just be consistent. And right now is the time to, to pounce. There's a lot of money from the federal, state, county, city, all the way down trying to revive businesses of all colors and all, all people and if you have a uh, something that you had, they may be closed, and it might be a time for you to get it reopened and not have that big of a a thing to, to hurt you. And um, just be consistent. Okay, great, great. Thank you. No, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Again, I apologize for being late. Okay.